We continue now at the top of Daf Tzadi Vov Amid Beis Maseches Ksubis. This is Ksubis Daf ninety six B. And the previous Amid the Gemara had asked, "What happens if there's a dispute?" The Almona claims that she has not received the Mizonos, and the Isomim they claim that they did provide the Mizonos for the Almona. And so the Gemara clarifies the question: Do we say that the property really the presumption is it's in the possession of the Isomim? The Al Almona and so the Almona she needs to bring proof that she has not yet collected. Oh, Dilmar, maybe no. Maybe the property really is in the possession of the Almona because she has a Shibut on the property. And therefore, it's upon the Yisomim to bring a proof that they did provide the Mizonos. Rashi over here says, She's trying to take property from them. She's going to have to bring Edom that the Yisomim admitted in front of the Edom that she didn't get anything. She doesn't bring Edom, she can't collect. Or do we say no? There's a lien on this property through a Tanai Bezin. Bezin says she's owed these Mizonos. So therefore, again, then we would say it's Becheskas Al Monakaimi and the Yisomim have to bring the Raya. And the Gemara says, Tashma, come in here, the following proof, to Tony Levi, because Levi taught as follows, Almona, when it comes to a widow, calls man shalonisis, as long as she has not gotten married, al hayasomim lohaviraya. So then it's the orphans that have to bring the proof, meaning the presumption is, when she says she needs to collect Mizonos, we give her the Mizonos. But Nisis, but once she gets married, so now she's trying to collect from the Mizonos from the past that she didn't get previously, so then oleho lohaviraya. So then already she's the one that needs to bring the evidence. Rashi over here says, Nisis vihib she already got married. Now she's trying to collect the Mizonos from the previous years. So it's upon her to bring a Raya, the Mishanisis. Because once she gets married, the property is no longer in her Rishus. At that point in time, she has now, now that property has gone to the Rishus of the Yisomim. So at that point in time, she will need to bring the Raya. And the Gemara continues, Amar Rav Shimi Barashi, Rav Shimi Barashi says, Kitanoi, let, let us say that this issue is a machlok is tanoim, again, when you have this dispute between the Almona and between the Yisom and whether she's gotten the Mizonos. And it says over here, Mocheres Vekoseves, it says that in, 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 in Almona she's allowed to sell property, and when she sells property in order to give herself either the Mizonos or the, or, or the Ksuba, so she sells this property and she writes, Elu the Mizonos, when, when she sells the property, she says, this property I'm selling for Mizonos purposes. Macharti. That's why I sold this property. Ve'elu, and this particular property, Lechsuva Macharti. She has to identify. This I sold for the Ksuba. She has to identify each property, why she sold that property. Divrei Rabbi Yehuda. That's the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yossi, Yom Rabbi Yossi says, Mocheres Vekoseves Stam. So Rabbi Yossi says that no, she sells, and she just writes Stam that she's selling. She doesn't have to write why she's selling each particular piece of property. Vechein Koch Yof, and this gives her a greater strength in terms of uh, in terms of later collection. Rashi over here says, the Choseves Elu Lemezonos, Bishtaros HaMechira, she Koseves Lelekuchos. When she is selling property to the Lekuchos, she writes in the Shtar, Koseves is HaMocher Lemezonos. She says, this was sold because I needed to sell off this property to, to provide for my Mezonos. And let's say she's selling in order to collect her Ksuba. She's saying, I sold this, and she has to write in the Shtar, I did this for the Ksuba, that way she can be reimbursed for those uh, for those payments. The Kach Kof she says we're going to explain exactly why again this gives her a greater strength Rashi will explain why writing Stam gives her a greater strength in terms of collection and that's what the Gemara now explains my lab is it not that in this Bryce over here, the Machlokas, Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Yossi, is as follows. The Rabbi Yehuda, the Amar Boy Lefurushe, according to Rabbi Yehuda, says that you need to explain in the Shtar why that property, why she's selling it. So Savar, he holds, Nichse Bechezkas Yasmi Kaimi. He holds that in general, really the property is, the, the presumption is that it's in the possession of the Yisomim. The Alho Almona Lohaviraya, and if the Almona wants to collect Mizonos, she needs to bring evidence. In other words, the Yisomim have the upper hand, and that's why Rabbi Yehuda says it's important to specify in the Shtar why she's selling this property property. Rabbi Yossi, Savar Loboy, Lefrushe, and Rabbi Yossi says, no, she doesn't need to explain in the Shtar. Nechzi v'cheskas almona kaimi, because really the property is already in the chazaka of the almona. V'ala yisomim lo raya, and it's upon the yisomim to bring the proof, meaning the almona, she is the one that has the upper hand. 
And Rashi over here says, My love, Baha Pligi, aren't they arguing about the following? It's Rabbi Yehuda Damar, Haperish, Yafela. Rabbi Yehuda is the one that says it's better for her to explain what she's selling. Because he holds that really the Asoma have the upper hand. So if she doesn't explain what she's selling off in order to pay off her Ksuba and what she's selling an off, selling off for, for sustenance, so when she comes and now claims the payment from them, they're going to say to her like this, you sold for the Ksuba. And your Ksuba you've already gotten. And now if she says to them, fine, give me the, the sustenance you owe me, because I consume that. So then they're going to say, what are you talking about? We've been giving you movable property all along for this. And they have the upper hand, so they'll be believed. In other words, what they're going to do is, they're going to essentially claim that whatever she sold off, that was for the Ksuba. And so they'll say, you've you've already received your Ksuba payment. That's your Ksuba. That's finished. You've sold off this property. Uh, you've sold off, off this inherited property of your late, of your husband in order to pay the Ksuba. And now you're going to say, give me Mizonos, and we'll be able to claim we gave you the Mizonos already because we have the upper hand. So therefore, it's much better to identify what she's selling off each piece of property for. Rabbi Yosi says no. She is the one that the presumption is on her side. She can say whether she's owed money. So she can go ahead and sell this property of her husband in order to pay for her sustenance and the ksuba. And they're the ones that are going to have to bring the proof. Therefore, says Rashi, it's better that she not write anything. Why? Because let's say there were certain fields that were bought from her husband by the lakuchos. She Let's say what would happen is the Yisomim end up with no property left and she still needs to collect. So what she'll then say is to her advantage, everything she sold from her husband's property, she used for sustenance. Now she'll be able to collect the Ksuba from those people who purchase from the Yisomim. Because if it's the other way around, because if she's going to say, I sold it for the Ksuba, she won't be able to fix the situation in terms of the Mizonos because you can't collect from the chasim mishubadim. V'yala lekuchos l'tachser. She won't be able to go to the lekuchos from mizonos. Al mizonos san or mizonos. The tanan in motzi and lemazon eishav abonos min chasim mishubadim. Because the mishnah says you're not allowed to take from the for sustenance from the chasim mishubadim. So in other words, when Rabbi Yosi is saying mocheres v'kosev stam, the reasoning is as follows: It's always better to say it's stam because then you'll have more chance to collect from the chasim mishubadim later on. The only concern would be that if you write that it's going to be stam, that the yisomim are going to start making claims and they're going to start saying, well, then you're is already fully paid off. But if the Yisomim don't have the upper hand, that's not going to be a problem. That's why Rabbi Yossi says it's not a problem. So it's Mocher Svekosev Estam. But Rabbi, Rabbi Yehuda says, no, the Yisomim have the upper hand, so you have to make sure to be very clear about why, why everything was sold, because otherwise the Yisomim will make the claim to their advantage, and she will lose against that claim. And that's exactly what the Gemara says right now. My lab Isn't that what they're arguing about here? Rabbi Yehuda, Damar boy Lefarushe, according to Rabbi Yehuda, says that everything needs to be explained in each document. Because he holds that the property really is in the Chazaka of the Asomen. And it's the Almana who's going to need to bring the proof. They have the upper hand against her, so she needs to explain everything when she's selling off the property. Rabbi Yosi, Rabbi Yosi says, Lo boy Lefarushe, there's no need to explain. Because the property really is in the hands of the Almona. And the Yisomim need to bring the proof. The Almona has the upper hand, so that's not going to be an issue that they're going to make these claims against her. And therefore, better to do it Stam, because if you do it Stam, then you have more chance to collect from the Nechasim Meshubadim. <clears throat> so the Gemara says, Mimai, how do you know that that's really the Machlokas Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Yossi? Dilma de Kuli Almo Nechsi Becheskas Almona Kaimi. Maybe really everybody agrees that the Nechasim are in the Chazoka of the Almona. She has the upper hand. And really, she should not need to specify. The Yisomim love Yirai. The Yisomim need to bring the proof. And if so, why does Rabbi Yehuda say that she should specify everything? For Rabbi Yehuda, it's a tova kamashvul. And Rabbi, Rabbi Yehuda is saying it's to specify. That's just good advice. To lo likru la rav sanusa, because otherwise they might call her rav sanusa like she's greedy and she's trying to take everything for herself. Rashi says to lo likru la rav sanusa haroa shemocher is called karkos elu. Someone sees her selling all of this land. Savar shemocher to lemezonos motzi ala. Shame Rav Sanusa. She's going to get a bad name if she's doing it all from Mizonos. So no one's going to want to marry her. So Rabbi Yehuda says, just to be, be clear, simply to avoid having this bad reputation, you're right. According to Rabbi Yehuda, it would have been better, technically speaking, not to say anything so that you can later collect from the Chasim Meshubadim. But there is an 
advantage to specifying things so that a person should not be called a Rav Sonusa. And the Gemara continues, Dilote Mahachi, because if we don't say this explanation, as Rashi over here says, Dilote Mahachi, the time of the Rabbi Yehuda, Lav Mishum, Nechsi Becheskas Yasmi. If we don't say that the reasoning of Rabbi Yehuda is not because the property is in the Chazaka, the Yisomim, if we don't give this reason that Rabbi Yehuda is simply giving an Eitz Tova, so then that's going to be problematic because Had the boy Rabbi Yochanan, that which Rabbi Yochanan asked, and we'll see Rashi over here, Had the boy Rabbi Yochanan al Milo Havi Raya. Rabbi Yochanan asked this question who has the upper hand? Who has to bring the proof? You can always say, Rabbi Yochanan didn't hear the b'risa between Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Yossi. But Mas Nisan Mi Yashmila, certainly Rabbi Yochanan knows all, knows all the Mishnayis. Shah Mishnah Nishnah is Tamid Beves HaMedrash, because the Mishnah is always taught in the base Medrash. And there's a Mishnah that also says like this. And if you're not going to say the idea of Eitzah Tova Kamashvon, you have a proof from a Mishnah. Why would Rabbi Yochanan even ask the question? Tif Shalei Mi Mas Nisan, Rabbi Yochanan could have answered this question from the Mishnah if you don't say Eitzah Tova Kamashvon. Because the Mishnah says, Mocheres Lemezonos Shalobe Bezdin. It says she can sell for the purposes of her Mizonos, not in Bezdin. The Chosevis, and she writes, Elu le Mizonos Macharti, I sold these for Mizonos. And it says the exact same thing in the Mishnah over here. It's talking about the fact that she's specifying that she sold it for Mizonos. Now, why is it specifying? So if you say it's a Tova Kamashmolan, fine, maybe it's an Eitz Tova. But if you say it's a Tova Kamashmolan is not the reason, so then it is obvious that the reason why she has to specify is because the Asomim have the upper hand. And then Rabbi Yochanan would have had the answer from this Mishnah. Elu Mimasnis and Lekal Mashmolan, obviously we can't bring a proof in the Mishnah, the Eitz Tova Kamashmolan, because it's just giving you an Eitz Tova. It's giving you a good advice not to look like a Rav Sanusa. Hachanami Eitz Tova Kamashmolan. Here too, it is just good advice, and that's why you have to say this explanation again. Otherwise, Rabbi Yochanan would have would have had an easy answer from the Mishnah. And the Gemara continues with another answer, another approach to the Bryce. It could be, we could also say that everybody agrees that the Nechassim, the property, actually belong in the Chazaka. They're in the, the presumption is that they're in the possession of the Yisomim, and the Yisomim have the upper hand. Now, if the Yisomim have the upper hand, so then really she should have to specify everything. But the Gemara explains, This is the reason of Rabbi Yossi, It's like Abaya Kshisha said, Because Abaya Kshisha said, Moshal to Rabbi Yossi, what is a marshal to what Rabbi Yossi is saying over here, where Rabbi Yossi is saying not to specify, even in this kind of situation? It's similar to the following case. It's Domel Meira. It's similar to a person on his deathbed, Shamar Tanuma Sayam Zuzla Ploni, who says, Give 200 Zuzla Ploni. Bal Chovi, who I owe money to, he's my creditor. And Rotsa Bechovo Notlan, Rotsa Matana Notlan, when the creditor takes it, he actually has a choice. He can take it either and say, I'm taking it to pay the debt, or he can say, I'm taking it as a Matana. And Rashi over here explains, if the Yisomim were to claim we already gave it, the Almana would have the lower hand. She'd have to bring the proof. Nevertheless, Rav Yossi has stam yafila. According to Rav Yossi, it is better when it is it is better when she when she says it's stam. She doesn't identify exactly why she's uh, why she's selling the property. Because again, like we said before, it's better to write it stam because then when you're later collecting, you can say you're collecting for for the ksuba, and therefore you can even collect from lekuchos from those who purchased it because it's nachas mishubadim. Kemosha pe Rashi uchratani abay kshisha. That's like I explained, meaning like Rashi explained, and that's what abay kshisha. That's what abay kshisha about to say over here. So the only concern is if you don't specify again, the Yisomim have the upper hand. That will be addressed in the next video on Daf Tzadi Zayin Ahmed Aleph.